Hello, everyone. Today, I'm bringing you a classic thriller and horror movie, Drag Me to Hell, which was released in 2009. The story begins with Christine, who has worked at a bank for many years and is on the verge of a promotion. One day, an elderly gypsy woman comes to the bank because her mortgage is overdue, and the bank is about to repossess her home. Without a house, she would be left homeless. Therefore, she pleads with the bank for a little more time. Christine, intending to help, agrees to ask her manager, but the manager has a different opinion. The manager believes the bank is not a charity, but he still leaves the final decision to Christine. Seeing the opportunity to impress, especially with the assistant manager's position in view and a new high-performing colleague around, she makes her decision. Returning to her desk, she directly denies the elderly gypsy woman's request for an extension. Hearing this, the old woman turns to leave but then, considering her desperate situation decides to plead further. She says, I am a woman of dignity and have never begged anyone for anything. After saying this, she unexpectedly kneels, which catches Christine off guard. Christine tries to help her up, but the old lady swears by her mother and starts kissing Christine's skirt. Panicking, Christine steps back, causing the old lady to fall forward due to the momentum. Amidst the staring bystanders, the old lady feels her dignity has been trampled. Trembling, she stands up and says to Christine, I begged you, and you shamed me. Christine feels somewhat guilty and is about to apologize when suddenly... <laughs> Luckily, the security intervenes in time. She looks at the pitiful old lady without anger. Later that evening, as she leaves work, she finds herself alone in the deserted underground parking lot. She sees the old lady's yellow car still parked desolately opposite hers, which makes her feel slightly frightened. She quickly gets into her car, and suddenly, she sees a scarf floating from under that car, drifting straight towards her. Christine's eyes follow the scarf towards the back of the car, and suddenly, she is horrified to find the old lady sitting right behind her in the car. Without waiting for Christine to react, the old lady violently attacks her, grabbing Christine's hair with her left hand and desperately pulling on her earring with her right. The skilled assault leaves Christine momentarily disoriented. In desperation, she reaches for something to use as a weapon and luckily finds a stapler, which she swings at the old lady's face. However, seemingly immune to pain, the old lady clutches Christine's neck tightly. Christine knows she must act fast to save herself, so she slams the gas pedal down, and the car surges forward. Struggling, she manages to buckle her seatbelt just as the car crashes into the vehicle in front. The old lady's false dentures fly out during the collision. The toothless old lady attempts to bite Christine, but her fleshy gums, although disgusting, do no damage. She quickly puts back her uneven dentures and viciously tries to bite Christine again. In a panic, Christine swiftly inserts a ruler into the old lady's mouth. <laughs> As Christine watches the old woman struggling to cough, she finally spits out the ruler. The ruler flies toward Christine and shatters the glass. Then, with one kick, Christine sends the old lady out of the car and quickly locks the door. The old woman tries several times but cannot open the car door. Inside the car, Christine feels a great relief and can't resist taunting the old lady, saying, but just after she speaks, the old lady vanishes, apparently having left on her own. Unexpectedly, the next moment, the old lady reappears with a rock and forcefully smashes it against the car window. The old lady grabs Christine's leg tightly and drags her out of the car. Just when Christine thinks it's all over for her, the old lady suddenly takes a button from Christine's sleeve. She breathes a swampy breath onto the button, raises it, and mutters incomprehensible curses. Then, she places the button back in Christine's palm, saying, Soon it will be you who comes begging to me. Overwhelmed, Christine faints. When Christine wakes up, she immediately calls the police, thinking it's all behind her. But from that day on, a door of fear and disgust slowly opens for her. One day, while driving, the eerie scarf suddenly appears in the car and sticks to her face. She manages to stop the car, but the scarf tries to force its way into her mouth. Terrified, Christine can only ask her boyfriend to stay with her. After a passionate night, Christine is sleeping soundly when suddenly a fly buzzes by her mouth, attempting to enter her body. It crawls into her nose, emerges from the other nostril, and desperately tries to enter her mouth. Christine wakes up coughing and choking, confused and looking around, not understanding what just happened. As she lies back down and turns to look at her boyfriend, she suddenly sees the grotesque face of the old gypsy lady in his place. Thankfully, it was just a vile nightmare, but the real horror is beginning. Christine feels like flies buzzing inside her stomach the next day at work. When she looks up, it's as if she sees the old witch's terrifying claw on the desk, and the tapping sound makes her uneasy. In anger, she shouts, and get your filthy pig knuckle off my desk! 
Her sudden outburst shocks her colleagues, and then drops of fresh blood suddenly start dripping from her mouth. The manager, noticing something is wrong, quickly comes over to offer help, but a torrent of blood bursts from Christine's mouth, covering him completely. Amidst the horrified stares of everyone, Christine flees the scene, knowing something terrible is happening to her. With her boyfriend's support, they consult a well-known local psychic named Ram. Soon, the seance begins. Ram senses a dark aura of resentment around Christine, and soon, a banshee emerges from her. Overwhelmed by the immense evil power, Ram has never seen such force before and feels powerless to confront it, considering urging them to leave. However, Christine insists on finding a solution. Ram explains that Christine is haunted by an evil spirit, likely cursed by someone. Christine immediately recalls the old woman who took her button and cast a spell on it. Planning to seek the old lady's forgiveness, she unexpectedly arrives at her funeral. Looking at the old woman's portrait, Christine inadvertently steps back and falls onto the horrifying corpse. Overcoming her disgust, she seeks Ram again for a solution. Ram suggests several remedies, including the simplest. Christine could sacrifice her beloved pet to appease the banshee temporarily. Christine does own a kitten, but she cannot bring herself to be so cruel and dismisses the idea. Just then, a terrifying figure approaches her. Christine rushes into her room, but the dark shadow reaches the doorway, stretching its hands into the bedroom. As she tries to escape through the window, the shadow quickly follows, breaks through the window, subsequently, an invisible dark force controls Christine, hanging her in the air, spinning uncontrollably, and finally slamming her onto the floor. Dizzy and confused, she makes a painful decision and, closing her eyes, kills the kitten and buries it in the garden. At that moment, her boyfriend finds her, ready to take her to meet his parents. Christine is excited yet nervous, having come from a rural background, and made her way into the city through hard work. Despite her good looks and physique, her humble family background contrasts sharply. Her affluent future mother-in-law is not pleased with her, even the family's black cat seems hostile. Fortunately, through her sincerity, she gradually wins the mother-in-law's favor. In the joyful moment, Christine suddenly feels something terrifying might happen again. Soon, she notices something moving inside the cake in front of her. Nervously, she picks up a fork and carefully digs into the cake, when suddenly an eyeball pops out. Panicked, Christine immediately stabs the twitching eyeball with her fork, causing blood to spurt out, accompanied by a scream. Christine wakes up with a start, realizing it was all a hallucination. Her boyfriend's mother asks her why she isn't eating the cake she had prepared with care. Christine, suppressing her disgust, takes a small bite of the cake but feels nauseous before swallowing it, and a fly flies out of her mouth. At that moment, a harsh door slamming sound rings out. Christine loses control of her emotions, suddenly throws a cup against the wall, and starts cursing loudly, resembling a street rowdy. This scene leaves her boyfriend's parents shocked and convinced that she is unsuitable for their son, prompting them to send her away. Unfortunately, misfortune continues. The next day at work, the manager tells her that the new Chinese employee, who excels in business skills and has excellent interpersonal relationships, has replaced her as the assistant manager. With both love and career crumbling, Christine urgently looks for a way to vent, so she picks up her roller skates to head out but is once again troubled by the eerie visions of the old witch. She gathers $10,000 and asks Ram to summon the strongest exorcist in the area, Mrs. Sean. Upon meeting Christine, Mrs. Sean instantly understands her plight. It turns out that 40 years ago, Mrs. Sean had encountered this banshee when a young boy was cursed. Mrs. Sean attempted an exorcism, but the banshee appeared and dragged the boy into hell. This is a lifelong regret for Mrs. Sean. She decides to help Christine and proposes a plan, transfer the banshee into herself first and then move it into a sheep. They initiate the ritual hand in hand but unexpectedly attract the spirits of the dead around them. Fortunately, Mrs. Sean quickly dispels the spirits with a spell. At that moment, the banshee appears and possesses Mrs. Sean directly. Ram tries to negotiate with the banshee, but she clarifies that her target is Christine's soul. During this, a servant stealthily reaches for the knife prepared earlier while Christine, Seizing a moment, quickly presses Mrs. Sean's hand onto the sheep's head. Ram urges the servant to act soon, but in his panic, the servant misses the sheep and cuts the rope instead, and the sheep bites him. The banshee takes this opportunity to possess the servant, who then begins to dance to the music as if driven by the banshee's power. The dancing servant suddenly opens his mouth and spits the kitten Christine had sacrificed. Christine, terrified, curls up in a corner, 
but thankfully, Mrs. Sean intervenes in time, driving the banshee out of the servant's body, though this act depletes all her life force, and she dies. Mrs. Sean's death plunges Christine into despair, realizing she might be on a path of no return. Ram then thinks of a solution. He instructs Christine to put the button into an envelope, explaining that passing the button to someone else would transfer the curse. The choice is now Christine's. With the envelope in hand, she goes to a drive-in diner to find someone to pass the curse to. She sees a happy family of four and a loving couple, but then her eyes settle on an old man with an oxygen tank in the corner, seeming like the best choice. Just as she makes up her mind to approach him, an old woman, shuffling along, enters her field of view. This kind of loving, enduring relationship is what she herself longs for. But what about herself if she can't find someone to whom to transfer the curse? So, she calls the Chinese colleague, planning to give the button as a congratulatory gift for his promotion. She threatens that he must come as she knows he stole her one customer's file for his business. However, as soon as the colleague arrives, he begins to sob about his work and life pressures. Christine's heart softens again. Is it her who is meant to die? Suddenly, Christine sees the old witch's obituary in the newspaper. She rushes to consult Ram about whether she can return the envelope. After receiving an affirmative answer, Christine runs to the cemetery that very night and violently digs up the old witch's grave in a torrential downpour. Looking at the corpse in the coffin, she picks up a shovel, pries open the witch's foul mouth, and shouts into the sky as if to tell the whole world that she is returning this cursed button to the old witch as a gift. She then puts all her strength to stuff the button into the witch's mouth, watching as the witch sinks into the water, envelope clenched in her teeth. Christine finally feels a weight lifted off her chest. Just as she is about to leave, she finds that the soil around the grave has been softened by the rain, making it impossible to climb out. At that moment, the witch's corpse suddenly floats to the surface and clings to her, causing Christine to scream in terror. However, a cross beside the grave suddenly falls, plunging Christine into the water. As everyone watches this gripping scene, Christine, through sheer willpower, climbs out of the grave. At this moment, it's as if she has been reborn, and good fortune begins to follow her. The next morning, the bank manager informs her that the executives have appointed her as the bank's assistant manager. And that's not the only good news. Her boyfriend is ready to travel and marry her despite his family's objections. Christine has never felt so happy. Indeed, the sun always shines after the storm. She quickly buys new clothes and meets her boyfriend at the train station. But just as they stand on the platform, ready to depart on their trip, her boyfriend pulls out a white envelope. He shockingly retrieves the button stuffed into the old witch's mouth. Christine, terrified, steps back repeatedly. Thus, we see the horrifying scene that opens the video. Christine is dragged into hell amidst her boyfriend's helpless cries. This concludes the narration. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel for more exciting narrations. Looking forward to seeing you in the next video.